of all people. O God, that he may rule your people righteously and the poor with justice. In his time will righteousness flourish. There shall be abundance of peace till the moon shall be no more. He shall rule from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Come, let us worship God. Our hymn is number eight. Verses 1, 2, and 4. to God Almighty. Almighty and merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and one another in both our actions and our inactions. We recognize that in Jesus Christ our light has come, yet often we choose to walk in shadows and ignore the light. Gracious God, forgive our sins and remove from us the veil of darkness that shrouds our lives. Illuminated by your word and sacrament, may we rise to the radiance of Christ's glory. Amen. Let us take 30 seconds for our individual confession.
God, for all those things we confess out loud and those things we confess silently to you, Lord, have mercy. And hear these words of St. Paul, who said, while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Now, now possibly we would die for the righteous. God shows his love for us by dying for the unrighteous. He took our sins in his body on the cross that we might be free of them, open to new life. Let us all celebrate that by striving each day to be more Christ-like and obeying his commandments to love Christ fully, body, mind, and spirit, to love our neighbors as ourselves, sharing from our abundance with those who have less, and praying for all, yes, even our enemies, even those who would hate us, so let us live, imitating Christ in this world, in gratitude for our salvation. So may it be today and all days. Amen. God alone, my soul waits in silence. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall never be shaken. 
How long will you assail a person? Will you batter your victim, all of you, as you would a leaning wall, a tottering fence? Their only plan is to bring down a person of promise. They take pleasure in falsehood. They bless with their mouths, but inwardly they curse. For God alone my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are an illusion. In the balances they go up. They are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion. Set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Our second lesson written by St. Paul, his letter to the church in Corinth. I mean, brothers and sisters, the appointed time has grown short. From now on, let even those who have wives be those who have none. Those who mourn as though they were not mourning. Those who rejoice as though they were not rejoicing. Those who buy as those who had no possessions. For those who deal with the world as though they had no dealings with it. For the present form of this world is passing away. Finally, the words of the Gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, saying, The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent. Believe the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting an end into the sea, for they were fishermen. Jesus said to them, Follow me, I will make you fish for people. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. He went a little farther. He saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in the boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our hymn is one on number 143, verses 1 through 3.
Please join me in our prayer for illumination. God, the source of all light, by your word you give light to the soul. Pour out on us the spirit of wisdom and understanding that our hearts and minds may be open. Amen. The big U-turn. That's what these fishermen experienced. When Jesus looked at them and said, come on, we're going on a road trip. Now, I know the old Cecil B. DeVille movies had Jesus meeting these disciples for the first time at the Sea of Galilee. They'd never seen it before, and he called them, and they jumped off their boat and followed him. That's a bunch of nonsense. No, he knew these people through John the Baptist. John's gospel is very clear on this. He had met them previously. Other gospels describe how Jesus had moved from Nazareth to Capernaum and started his ministry there. Capernaum, wow, right on the Sea of Galilee. He had had a ministry there. It wasn't going on the road until John the Baptist was arrested. That was Jesus' signal. It was time to take this ministry with disciples he'd already met, who already he had fellowship with. It was time for them to do something different than meeting in Capernaum. No, now they had a message to bring through the larger region of Galilee, all over northern Israel. It was time to go on the road. And these disciples had a real choice to make. Do we leave our business? Do we leave our livelihood and trust following this man we know and love, but still is an independently wealthy. How are we going to survive doing this? No, it wasn't magical, it wasn't the first meeting, but still it takes a lot of commitment to leave a livelihood, to leave the familiar for the unknown. Would we have the courage to do this? Would we have the faithfulness to do it? I know we romanticize this story from 2,000 years ago, but today, in the real world, how do we know, because we don't see physical Jesus, how do we know when we are called to do something for the kingdom, to leave the familiar, to leave our income, to go do something new for the Lord Jesus Christ. It's not easy to discern what Jesus is telling us, but are we listening? Would we know it if we hear it, or do we just kind of cover our ears? I remember I first began singing. I, no comments, please, about my singing. I first began singing in the basement of my home in Jersey City. Why? Because when you go down there in the winter, there's a lot of horror monsters who growl. I learned later it was the furnace. But it's amazing. You don't have to hear that if you're singing really loudly down the basement. Some of us sing loudly. Some of us pay attention to the world. We'd rather not hear God calling because it's scary to do something new. It's scary to leave a livelihood. Minister in upstate New York, he was always getting bugged. 
His family thought it would be a great idea to become overseas missionaries. He was not interested. He had one of the best prosperous churches in New York State, Synod of Albany Reformed Church in America, and a great new opportunity came along. No, not overseas mission. He got to be the head administrative officer of all of Albany Synod. Great plum job. And his family kept telling him, you know, I think we're called to do overseas mission work. He kept saying, no, no, no. They kept saying, yes, yes, yes. And finally, he said a prayer. God, if, if I'm really supposed to do that, show me a big, big sign. You know, it wasn't long after that. He got hauled out in an ambulance. And the doctor told him, you need to find a job that's less stressful. Okay, God, I heard you. And he left the familiar. Had to do his own fundraising. And was a successful missionary for a decade with what we grew up calling gypsies, the Romans in Eastern Europe. He said, you know, the income wasn't as great, the prestige was less. Boy, was I happy. It was so much less stressful. What God calls, are we answering? Or we try to run away. But if we're in the wrong place in God's kingdom, all we're going to do is feel stressed. Come, follow me, said Jesus. Those disciples might have said no, but my hunch is it might not have gone real well for them if they had. You don't say no to the Lord Jesus Christ. Professor, Pope College, my old mentor, John, he wrote in a recent email that 2020 was one of the best years ever. What? You know, seriously, have you ever heard anyone say that 2020 was the best year ever? Seriously? Anyone? I didn't think so. Well, Don always was the outlier. He said it was the best year ever. For 15 years, he's been trying to finish a book. He finally did it in 2020. And the book was all about his parents. His parents had a very, very normal, successful life here in the United States. Somehow, I don't know the details, can't wait to read the book, I'll find out. They felt called to ministry overseas. No, not in Paris, no, not in London. In Beirut, Lebanon, anywhere Lebanon burning desire to be in Beirut, Lebanon. I never had the desire. And Don spent from early grammar school until high school, growing up in Beirut. He still loves the nation. He wore a black armband when Israel invaded Beirut. I spent a lot of conversations with him about what it's like growing up overseas. What it's like going to an English-based school system with just other missionary children, and yet going to church with Christian Lebanese. He said when he came back here, 
When they came back from that mission, he was a senior in high school. He attended high school down in Teaneck, where the family moved to. He was totally out of sync with all of the American trends, all the consumerism. And he said he wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Growing up in Lebanon gave him the gift of hospitality, gave him a more global view, realized you don't need to buy stuff to form community. He said the best gift his parents ever gave him was to respond to God's call to be missionaries in Lebanon. And he was thrilled they did. The blessing comes back when we follow God's calling. And if God tells us to do something, we best be careful. It's not smart to say no to God. Another story. April number one. There's going to be two April stories. Two different women, both named April. Little girl grew up in the projects of Hoboken. Everyone else Everyone else she knew, because right by the projects in Hoboken, trains always went through and sometimes they stopped. The big game in her neighborhood of the projects was who can paint the best picture on the stop train? She had, she had a different view. She somehow always felt sorry for rocks. Instead of some stuffed animals, she had a rock collection. She used to hug them and kiss them. And when the train was stopped, she would look at rocks near the tracks and grab these rocks. She didn't want them to get run over. Literally, she had a bag of rocks. She carried, no, this is not fiction. I know what sounds crazy. It's like Charlie Brown's Halloween where he gets a bag of rocks. She used to carry a bag of rocks with her because she wanted to take them home. They might get cold outside. She'd take them to church with her so they could hear the prayers. Well, she got older and she felt God was calling her to do something. And she looked at it. She looked at the single mothers in her neighborhoods. That someone needs to care for them. And she went church to church to church to church and said, we all need to care for these single mothers. And because of her persistence, some people said, because she drove us crazy, we had to say no to your river. She set up the first food pantry on the west side of Hoboken. Caring for rocks, that was her first calling. And it morphed into caring for people. You know, the food pantry's still there. Hoboken Food Pantry, and yes, April is still leading it. How many years later? She's a smart woman. She could have gotten 12 degrees and made a fortune. God didn't call her for that. God called her to use her compassion to feed those in need. And she did it, and she still does it. She does it well. What's God calling us to do? Second April, April had a very, very comfortable life down in Virginia, enjoying herself. Then she started reading about human trafficking. 
In the third world countries, how many young girls were promised jobs as maids or wait staff and wound up getting forced into other industries? It burned her. It burned her heart. It burned her husband's heart. The two of them said, oh God, you won't get this thought out of my head, will you? The two of them were the ones who founded House of Hope in Nicaragua. Remember, April was here with us. Pam was there in Managua ministering to women in brothels. She didn't come back. She didn't go there temporarily and come back. No, she and her husband live in the House of Hope in Managua, Nicaragua. Now trust me, folks, I'm not interested in living in Lebanon. I really have no desire to live in Nicaragua. I hope God doesn't call me to those places. She probably didn't choose that either. She probably never heard of Managua, Nicaragua until God put it in her head. There's a problem here with trafficking. And yeah, there's poverty. Yeah, there's social unrest. She did her first video this past week from Managua since the plague. You know, I've never seen a woman look happier. With all the harsh things she sees, she's doing God's work in a completely different way than her lifestyle here in the United States. Boy, what a happy person. Remember Dr. Carice was here? Dr. Carice sang a concert for us. She came from a small town out in the Midwest and God kept putting it into her head. She was gonna do something great. She was gonna do something great. She was gonna do something great. And she discovered what it was, her singing, her acting. She came to New York. She was a Broadway singer, dancer. And God still had that in her head. You're going to do something great. You're going to do something great. And she'll find what the heck is it? And she read a story about the Hope Ship, that medical ship that needed volunteers. Well, she volunteered and realized the people who did the most good were physicians. So Greece said, well, I guess I gotta be a doctor. How many people, after one career, decide to go to med school? That's a game for the young, isn't it? Well, she's still young, but not that young. She went to med school, became a physician, went to a residency, became a gynecological surgeon. Okay, God, what great thing do you want me to do? Twice a year. She gives up a month's income to travel around the world, bringing medical care free of charge. That's where we met her. She was in Nicaragua with Pam. And she's been to Calcutta. She's been to Russia. She taught surgical techniques in a, literally a field tent in Africa. Then she comes back to Florida, treats a lot of poor folks down there. When she was here at a concert, I had a good long time to talk with her, away from other folks, just personal conversation. I said, what's it like coming back to the United States after these wild trips of yours? living in tents and sleeping on cots. She told me I'm always disappointed when I come back. Disappointed. You live in luxury when you come back, or at least middle-class luxury. 
She said, yeah, but I'm not just not as happy. I have every luxury the Western world can provide, but I'm not doing great things for the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what I want to be doing. Come, follow me, says the Lord Jesus and Andrew and Simon. John and James did just that. And April and April did just that. My friend in New York State did just that. Carice did just that. What's he calling us to do? Maybe worldwide mission, maybe simply collecting clothes to Honduras, Maybe simply telling a friend about the Lord Jesus and inviting the person here to Bible study. Either way, it's an offer we dare not refuse. For someday we'll stand before Jesus when we leave this mortal coil. He'll ask us what I called why didn't you follow? Or maybe he'll say, when I called, you really did follow well. Welcome to the kingdom. What's God calling each of us to do? Are we listening? Are we discerning? Are we obeying? That's our questions for today. May we be diligent in answering them. Follow Jesus wherever we go. To him be the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. Question 48 from Heidelberg. If his humanity is not present wherever his divinity is, then aren't the two natures of Christ separated from each other? Certainly not. Since divinity is not limited and is present everywhere, it is evident that Christ's divinity is surely beyond the bounds of the humanity that he has taken on. But at the same time, his divinity is in and remains personally united to his humanity. Facebook. If you know some young children who could benefit from that, please tune in at that time and show it to them. Or um, if you need a little boost, extra boost of gospel, tune in yourselves and invite everyone you know. Today um, on our virtual Facebook, Dr. Pam will be doing the craft after I do the story. So tune on in. Congregational meeting is upcoming on February 14th. It's going to be a hybrid. It will be after church on Zoom, as well as we'll designate a room for folks who aren't computer savvy. So Phil is setting that up. Our Zoom link will be on at 11 o'clock. I don't expect to be able to start the meeting before 11.15. So until then, if you're going to be on the Zoom meeting, click on the link, chat with one another. In the next week or so, Phil will be sending out that link so we can all get ready for that. 
That's February 14th. I know it's Valentine's Day. Sorry. But we'll have that online or in person. Hey, what else announcements? Oh, yeah. Flowers today are in honor of Pam's birthday. What's this? Oh. Don't announce publicly that she's 63. Oh, oh, oops. Want to sing happy birthday, please? Or play happy birthday? checks or use the tithely link that's on the church website even though we uh, we're not open as much for business as we usually have been with the plague our expenses continue please give as the Lord has given you the ability thank you
We bring our offerings to your throne. Bless them and bless us and make us acceptable for your service. Give us great things to do for you and your kingdom. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In your prayers this week, please continue to pray for Alice, Bruce, and Brian. Hey, Bill Hamilton still is having some treatments and needs your prayers. Hey, Zulema, man, we were praying for her. She had the cardiac surgery, then her mom died. Well, she's now COVID positive. So continue to pray for Zulema. Also, the Senzamichi family on Eleanor's death this week. She'll um, have visitation tomorrow at Rewerts, and um, her funeral will be Tuesday morning. So please keep Anthony and his family in your prayers. Shaniqua, who we've been praying for, Shaniqua Wallace, she is now home from the hospital and being cared for for Juetta. So please keep praying for she and the whole family. Bob added a prayer request this morning. Jan, who he knows from the Creskill Salon, she's um, suffering cancer now. So please keep Jan in your prayers. Jeannie requests a friend of hers, Lorraine, she lives in Virginia. She went to um, get minor surgery, and for some reason, she's in ICU now. Details are sketchy, but Lorraine needs our prayers. That's enough to know. Anyone else, any new prayer updates or requests going on? Guess it's time to pray. Oh, Elaine, yes. Oh, okay. C-section on Friday. Yeah. All right. Sounds good. Oh, yes, I forgot also. Thanks for reminding me by saying that. Judy had her cataract surgery, her first of two this week, and she's doing fine. And she thanks everyone for the prayers. Wow, well, you're going to be a grandma again, huh? You're too young for that. How'd you manage it? Time to pray. We thank you, oh God, what a privilege it is. You've called us, or we wouldn't know who you are. And you hear our prayers, even though you don't answer the way we want. You give us this place to praise you without persecution, without fear. Thank you, oh God. Please forgive us when, when, when we neglect you for the things of this world. But you always pull us back, and we thank you for that. May we not get impatient as we wait for COVID vaccines. Continue, we pray, to keep us safe until those days come. And bless those vaccines. May they do well. May they protect your people. We pray for our consistory as we plan and work in our long-term planning. Keep us always in your vision. Give us an abundance of your spirit that we may thrive in your spirit that we may outreach well to our neighbors. Let others know who you are. We pray for all our friends who need your healing hand this day. We lift up boots before you and Alice. As they rehab, may they rehab well. We continue to pray for Brian in his up and down recovery. May he get full health. 
We pray for Bill and all of his treatments. May they be effective. We pray for your blessing upon Zulema as she heals and as she grieves. Walk with her, we pray, and heal her body, mind, and spirit. We pray for Jenny as she goes in for her C-section. We pray your protection on her. We pray for skilled physicians. We pray for a healthy, faithful baby. We thank you for praying to me through her surgery and pray for her as she prepares for her next. Touch Anthony. As he grieves the loss of his mother, walk with him. May he feel your full strength all days. Pray for Shanika, the Wallace family. Bless them with your spirit. May that family find the strength beyond the comprehension. Show us a miracle. Show us full healing, we pray. Likewise, we pray for Jan, Al, and Lorraine. Touch them. Heal them. May they find good health once more. And may they, may they acknowledge your hand in their healing. Give you praise and glory. Walk with us this week, O oh God, as we seek to do your work. Call us. Give us the ability to respond. Give us the strength to do your will and do it well. For these and all things we pray in one name. The Lord's name, our Savior, Jesus Christ. As we remember what he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Our final hymn is number 45, verses 1, 2, and 4.
hear the Lord calling. Do your mission this week and always. Be blessed on your journey in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.